Hello and welcome to the ABCs of the Annual Wellness Visit Presentation. My name is Joy Harrell and I will be your facilitator today. At this time, all attendee lines are muted to help reduce echo and distracting feedback. However, we encourage your interaction and questions. Please feel free to submit questions and comments in the chat box provided in your taskbar. Please note that the physician portion of this presentation has been pre-recorded. At the end of our pre-recorded portion of the presentation, we will open our lines for questions. To participate in this open line time, please use the raise hand icon in your taskbar. Questions will be answered in the order that they are received. All questions that are not addressed in this open discussion will receive a follow-up email and or call. Today's first recorded speaker will be Dr. John Fink. Dr. Fink has served as a family physician and a member of the medical staff of Bay Health Medical Center since coming to Delaware in 2000 with the United States Air Force. He is a graduate of the Georgetown University School of Medicine and is completing his master's degree in healthcare quality and safety through the Jefferson University School of Public Health. Throughout his career, Dr. Fink has been intimately involved with quality improvement projects at the clinics, private offices, hospitals, and nursing homes where he has worked. Currently, he serves as the Vice Chairman of the Performance Improvement Committee of Bay Health Board of Directors and is the Chairman of the Quality and Care Management Committee of Bay Health Physician Alliance. Our second recorded speaker is Dr. Preeti Gupta. Dr. Gupta has worked as a family practice physician at Bay Health Medical Center since 2008. She received her medical education from Favara Rural Medical College, Loney, India. She did the first year of her family practice residency training at St. Elizabeth Family Practice Residency Program, Utica, New York, and the second and third years of her residency training at the State University of New York at Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. She is also certified by the American Board of Family Medicine and the American Board of Obesity Medicine. Dr. Gupta currently serves as the ACO Medical Director for Bay Health Medical Center. She also serves as the Chairperson of the Medical of Bay Health Medical Group Quality Improvement Committee and the Bay Health Medical Group Primary Care Physicians Committee. She is also a member of the Bay Health Bylaw Committee and the Bay Health Medical Group Operating Council. Our final recorded speaker of the day is Dr. Joseph Parisi. Dr. Parisi is the medical director for Bay Health Physician Alliance. He practices family medicine and is a member of the Bay Health Medical Group. He is also the president for Delaware Board of Medical Practice and Discipline, chairman of the Department of Ambulatory Medicine at Bay Health Medical Center, as well as the medical director, ACLS program. He serves as one of the board of directors for Central Delaware Physicians Organization, medical consultant for ILC NASA Spacesuit Program, and medical director for Westminster Healthcare Facility. Dr. Preezy is a graduate of New York College of Osteopathic Medicine. He has served our country as an active duty general medical officer, captain of the United States Air Force, and a flight surgeon. At this time, the pre-recorded portion of today's presentation will begin. Thanks to all of you participating in our conference today. Um, you're here hopefully to learn a little bit more about wellness visits, but maybe you want to know why. And so we here at Bay Health, we're asking that same question. Uh, why are wellness visits important and what do they mean to members of an accountable care organization? We do know that wellness visits are an already established yet underutilized vehicle for addressing preventative services. Uh, they're a way for us to capture a lot of the things that we know our patients should be getting, but perhaps we don't have the time or resources to do so. We also know that wellness visits can help us meet ACO metrics because many of the items that are addressed specifically in a wellness visit directly correlate with the measures that we're being uh, monitored on. We know that wellness visits are a significant missed source of revenue for many practices, and we'll show you some examples of how we uh, recognize that here at Bay Health. And then uh, studies have also shown that most of the visits uh, of a wellness visit can be performed by non-physicians. One of the things that we hear about uh, adding wellness visits to the routine of a practice is that there's just not the time or resources, especially from a physician standpoint, to do so. But it has been established that these can be done by nurses as well as by pharmacists and uh, be done well. So here at Bay Health, we looked at our experience with wellness visits to date over the past two years, and it's really been underperforming to say the least. Uh, from a two-year standpoint, from 11 different providers, we really had just over 400 wellness visits and were able to build 
and collect uh, almost $50,000. If we started to put some kind of intensive wellness visit program into place, you can see those numbers start to increase rapidly. So if just one of those providers were able to do a little bit more than uh, just about one wellness visit per workday with an average reimbursement for a wellness visit being just over $100, that yearly reimbursement would take you to over $20,000. Now, if all 12 of us were able to do even half of that, to do just a few a week, um, that would take the group's revenue to about $135,000. And if we had a robust program mm -hmm. and were able to do one wellness visit a day, you can see those numbers approach over a quarter million dollars. So there's some significant revenue to be had there. And that's a nice justification to your boards and to your uh, group administrators that perhaps uh, there's a reason not just to do this, but also to commit some resources ahead of time to make it happen. So then how do you make this program happen? How do you develop a robust uh, illness, annual wellness visit program? Well, first, of course, you have to engage and recruit all the beneficiaries that are eligible for something like this. Uh, you want to uh, create a model in your office that really minimizes the impact and allows for an efficient process. Um, you want to be able to provide each component of the wellness visit exam with the appropriate clinical team member that can do it. So if it has to be done by a physician, then it can be done by a physician. But if it doesn't have to be, dedicate uh, perhaps the resources from uh, other members of your team to do that. Um, and then once those revenues are realized, uh, you can justify the cost of hiring additional staff uh, towards um, rolling out your program and, and making it more robust. So to actually go through the nuts and bolts of how one would do something like that, I'm going to introduce Dr. Pinsley, uh, who will talk to you uh, about one particular model that you might be able to follow. Uh, hi, thank you, Dr. Pink. I'm going to talk about the workflow for annual wellness visit. So we are going to go for uh, some um, coding for annual wellness visit. Here we have three codes uh, for wellness visit. First one is G0402. This is the initial wellness visit was introduced by Medicare. It has to be done in first 12 months of patient qualifying for Medicare. So typically a 65-year-old gentleman comes got Medicare. We have to do this visit in first 12 months. He becomes a Medicare. Second code is G0438. This is annual wellness visit. This has to be done once in lifetime. It has to be done after first 12 months of patients become qualified for Medicare. After these two codes, we can use G0439. This is subsequent annual wellness visit, and this can be done yearly after we are done with first two uh, visits. If patient misses first year of wellness visit, we cannot code G0402, but we can code G0438 and then annual subsequent visit. I have given here payments. These are approximately every institute has different ranges depending upon their negotiation with PMS. We are going to start with workflow, how we are going to do this uh, wellness visit. First topic is identification of patients who are eligible for annual wellness visit. Second, notification to eligible patients, scheduling their appointment, and then the day of appointment. I'm going to go through each bullet separately now. So identification for patients who are eligible for annual, annual wellness visit. We can get this identification done through our EHR. Nowadays, EHRs are very helpful. Or we can get the provider list, which is given to us by CMS. Uh, we can also recruit um, high utilizers or non utilizers. Uh, sometimes patients who are not very ill, they don't show up for regular appointments, so this is the time we can catch those non-utilizers. High utilizers, they are coming frequently. Sometimes when we do the annual wellness visit, uh, we can catch a lot of points there and cut down their utilization in uh, 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 with the medi uh, medications and also with the uh, follow-ups. Thinking about starting with 100 patients per practice right now. Notification to eligible patients. Notification can be done by mass emails or letters. Um, depending upon the area we are, in our area right now, we don't have 
all the Medicare patients having emails. So our main uh, thing is letters or phone calls. Then we in, um, mail them their notification about their qualified for annual wellness visit. At that time, we do mail them a questionnaire for health risk assessment and uh, there are another form now about their history. And when you mail out the notification, it's important to make sure you explain to the patient what to expect at the time of that appointment so yeah. that they understand that the visit is a wellness visit specifically and is not meant to cover their chronic or routine medical yeah. issues. Thank you, Dr. Pink. And we do have this handout um, in our package. Uh, this is Dr. Parisi. I'd like to also interject. It's very important that this letter that gets sent out or the email that gets sent to the patient about the wellness visit uh, is going over with the patient while you have them available. But it's important to tell the patient they most likely will not be seeing the physician and they really they should not assume that because they're there for a visit, it will extend beyond just a wellness visit. So in other words, they shouldn't expect that they're going to be able to address medication refills or other problems that may be coming up or any other type of medical care they would like to do because they just happen to be at the office. That really must be strongly emphasized before the patient comes in. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parisi. Yeah, that's the one of the things in this model that we are going to educate our patient what exactly annual wellness visit is. Annual wellness visit is just their wellness. We are not going to address their diabetes, their hypertension, their cold, cough, the visit they come for annual wellness visit. If they are sick or they need to see their provider for diabetes, they have to have a different appointment rather than discussing at the time of annual wellness visit. Thanks a lot for your point. Uh, so scheduling appointment. Uh, practice can decide uh, what time they want to do annual wellness visit and what day they want to do. So it's depend upon practice to practice. We do have some smaller practice where we don't have to do annual wellness visit every single day. So we can share staff who are trained in doing annual wellness visit. So maybe can, we can do one day each practice. It takes at least 60 minutes to do annual wellness visit. And in this 60 minutes, as Dr. Fink mentioned in the, uh, his um, presentation, that most of it can be done by non-physician. It can be done by a um, not uh, nurse or a medical assistant. So we have to do the proper slotting of time for annual wellness visit, and we have to train our front staff how to do the time slotting for the wellness visit. On the day of appointment, when patient walks into the clinic, uh, first patient checks in in the front desk. The trained staff goes and uh, talks to the patient, but we make sure that patient has brought his package of information. There is some forms which patient need to fill up before their visit, so we have to make sure that uh, those forms are filled up. Um, if patient forget to bring the form, it can be done uh, at the same day, and we have extra copies on the front desk, so we can hand it to patient and he can fill up or she can fill up the form. The other part which is done by front desk is uh, after visit summary. Uh, this will be done after the appointment is done. So activity performed by train staff. Takes the patient to examination room, goes over completed forms. So patient has a form which he brings, and if there's any pertinent positive in that form, she has to make a checklist of that uh, positive information. Update list of current provider. So if patient goes to a cardiologist, gastroenterologist, endocrinologist, we have to have all those providers in our EHR. Update past medical history, social history, family history, medication list, and allergy. Take vital, height, weight is always taken. So we have to take height every time when patient comes for annual wellness visit. We cannot uh, be taking the height taken previously. Vision, vision can be done, a snail's chart, or um, uh, you can help me that uh, for the closed vision. Uh, the, the cards? Cards, yeah. Uh, hearing, uh, 
CMS is not recommending what type of hearing test we need. We can do a whisper test that should satisfy the uh, the criteria. We also do depression screening every visit, and depression screening can be chosen by the facility. Uh, from BEHAS, we have chosen uh, a PHQ-9 screening. Functional ability. Uh, functional ability is time go up and go test, which can be done actually when patient is getting up from the waiting room and coming to the examination room. The trained staff can see how patient has done. Uh, cognitive function assessment is done by mini cop test. This is individualized. You can choose whatever your your um, uh, facility is doing, but we have decided are doing mini cock test and we have a handout of mini cock test how to be performed. Um, the trained staff also goes through the risk factor. So suppose if patient is obese, that's the positive risk factor. If he's smoking, that's the positive risk factor and make a list of the risk factor. EKG if needed. EKG is allowed by uh, CMS for only first examination, which is G0402. That's welcome to Medicare. After first um, wellness visit, EKG is dependent upon the patient and the provider. We have to, up to up update the immunization record. So flu shot, influenza, uh, influenza shot, pneumococcal uh, immunization, and booster vaccine. Update their preventive checklist. Preventive checklist means their mammogram, their colonoscopy, uh, their um, low dose CT chest need to be updated. And we have to come out with a preventive wellness plan. So suppose the patient had a colonoscopy done in 2005, we need to come out with when he needs the next colonoscopy. So that should be a return form. Uh, activity performed by provider. Provider goes over the work done by trained staff. Order tests if needed. Suppose patient is due for mammogram, we have to order mammogram. If he is due for low dose CT, we have to order the CT. Counseling, counseling mostly nutrition counseling for obesity, smoking situation. There another thing is if patient comes back positive for depression or fall screening, we can address him with it or we can call the patient for next day appointment and talk about depression or their fall screening positive next visit. And the treatment can be scheduled for another visit. Uh, Dr. Gupta, is, is it necessary to do the counseling for nutrition and or obesity or smoking during the annual wellness visit or can that be done another day? We can do it another day or we can always do a referral. Um, in BEHAS, we have a smoking cessation program going on currently, so we can refer them for the program or for obesity counseling, we can refer them to a dietitian or we can refer them to a local uh, YMCA if they have some program going on there. Okay, so it's not necessary for the provider to do these tests at this examination. We just have to document that what the plan will be. What, what will the plan, yeah. Thank you. And if we think that patient is really morbidly obese and need to be talking more about the obesity, we can definitely schedule a next visit for the uh, patient and talk about just obesity. After visit summary is very important. It's recommended by C, uh, CMS. Uh, so we go through their um, immunization schedule and also their um, uh, screening. And the, those has to be in a paper which is provided to patient. Suppose they had a flu shot this visit, so they are due for next flu shot next year. They had a pneumonia shot at 65. They do not know need any more. All this needs to be written out for the patient. Uh, we have to list their medical conditions, so hypertension, hyperlipidemia, whatever the diagnosis they have in the referral and education, which we just talked about, uh, need to be in that after visit summary. Um, I will hand this to Dr. Faresi. He's going to talk about um, the benefit of this model. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gupta. All right. The reason this was developed by many folks was, what benefits can we offer the, the senior folks uh, who don't normally <laughs> get themselves to see the physicians. Uh, and there's several reasons why. Number one, if we have these folks come in, and not only does it increase the, the uh, access for uh, the patients, but it allows other staff members to 
get familiar with these patients, and in so doing, they will learn to perform these tests, and they will get to feel that they're actually part of the team taking care of the patients. And the, uh, the patients will feel that uh, our, our offices are more just uh, for sickness visits. Uh, and number two, uh, the people we get into the wellness visits will help us get folks who really should come in on a more regular basis who have been falling through the cracks for a long period of time. Uh, as we all know, there are groups of patients who are high utilizers for some very expensive services like emergency rooms and hospital inpatient visits and are often leery of coming in for whatever reason. But by promoting the wellness visits, uh, we can hopefully advise them and get them into a position where if they do have medical illnesses, the wellness visits will help them get to where they need to be so they don't have to worry about utilizing very expensive services down the road. Uh, from a financial part, excuse me, yes, Dr. Okay. Fink. Dr. Chris, I was just going to add, too, that the uh, outreach also helps our patients who are high utilizers because how many of our uh, diabetics, that we, poorly controlled diabetics that we see on a pretty regular basis, do we overlook the fact that they still need a PSA or a colonoscopy, for mm -hmm. example? So so even if the, the folks are in all the time, it doesn't mean that their wellness needs are being met. So, so this is a really good tool for both those high utilizers and those uh, folks we rarely, rarely see. So just wanted to add that. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Fink. Uh, from the financial aspect, uh, the wellness visits are they pay fairly well for medical care type visits. And by doing so, not only does it regenerate more income for the organization, but going forward, it will allow us to provide more of these services with more staff to more patients because the program not only provides some financial benefit to the institution, but allows enough revenue to be left over to hire more staff to provide more services. Um, in addition to that, uh, by bringing these things into wellness visits, we're going to increase downstream revenues for things like mammograms, follow-up visits to your office, for instance, for things that are found on a PSA examination, colonoscopies. So it does benefit everybody in the community, not just uh, from the medical standpoint, but also from the financial standpoint. And, and again, it's very important that the, the patients get the feeling that everybody in the practice is there to assist them and to help them. And by getting our staff to provide some of the uh, involved care or examinations of these patients, everybody gets the feeling we're all working together as a team. And going forward, that's sort of where we're trying to get it. Patients need to feel like this is their medical home. And then when they come here, everybody cares about them. It's not just the providers. And everyone's going to work as best as they can to make the patients healthy. The question comes up, is there anything else we can do and be billed for during the annual wellness visits? And what things are covered and what things are not covered? And this slide sort of goes over the things that, things that are really covered by the annual wellness visits and are not considered things that have to be paid for. And as you can see, things like the alcohol misuse screening, the rectal exams, tobacco counseling, and depression screening, they're all wavered. So there is no charge for this when the patient is again during the annual wellness visit. That also includes the face-to-face -face counseling for obesity. And again, you see those those charges are pretty, you know, pretty stiff for people on, on fixed incomes if they have to do it outside of a wellness visit. So it's another reason we have people who have these issues maybe to think about coming at least once a year to get this done so they can get some counseling and not to spend extra income for it. As far as EKGs go, they are only covered during the initial physical exam to Medicare. Uh, if the patient comes in and decides they need one or we think they need one, we have to explain to them that there will be a charge at this point. And the code for that is up there. It's a HICPIS code G0403. So that's, of all the things listed, the only one they'll have to pay extra for uh, if it's done during the annual wellness visit. Everything else is pretty much waived and covered as part of the, the examination. This concludes our pre-recorded portion of today's presentation. We're fortunate to have Dr. Gupta and Dr. Prezi with us today. At this time, I will unmute their lines to assist in answering questions. Please feel free to use the raise hand icon, raise hand icon that is provided in your taskbar in order to have your line unmuted to ask your question, or feel free to submit your question in the question bar provided, which will be addressed in the order they are received. Dr. Gupta, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Let me get Dr. Okay. Freezy. 
Okay, Dr. Preeti is on. I can hear you, yes. Okay. Okay, I do have a question from, from Maria in Georgetown, and she would like to have a copy of a diagnosis listed for their records. Uh, we will fax that uh, to her. Uh, we have a copy with Scott also, so she, he, I, maybe when I see next time Scott or uh, ask my staff to send the diagnosis to Maria, uh, no problem. Okay, um, I have another question um, from uh, Miss Cindy. Are these visits applicable to only MCC for service patients or also to patients in Medicare Advantage plans? Um, Medicare Advantage plan, we can definitely do the physicals for them, but it's paid differently. So I don't know if they they're using the same code or different code. We have to talk to the Medicare Advantage plan themselves. But this is this um, codes and presentation is typically for traditional Medicare patient. Okay, um, another question. Can you bill regular office visit with an AWV if patient has a problem also? Yes, you can bill a regular office visit, but then we need two different notes. So we have to have a note for annual wellness visit and a note for acute visit or um, follow-up visit. Whatever we are using, we have to have two separate notes at the same day. Okay. Here, see. I'll give a few more minutes for any more questions. If anybody else has a question, uh, yes, Miss Lola, you have a question. Go ahead, Miss Lola. Gail, did you have a question? Okay, we will go to the next one. Any more questions? Okay, I have another one. Um, Dr. Freezy, if you'd like to answer this one. What would be the best way to convince a provider or a group of providers to participate in this program? They see it as too much paperwork. Well, you, you could take it from several perspectives. Number one, uh, if it's done properly using all the workflows we've suggested, uh, it will generate extra income and with the extra income you would probably be able to get some more staff to help you keep the program going. Uh, secondarily is it's great for patients and the more we can do for patients and the more we can keep them healthy the better it benefits everybody uh, not only the patient but our practices and the surrounding communities. So I think it's sort of a win-win for everybody. Okay. Um... Another question. Which metrics correlate well with the visits? This is from Brenda. I I did not understand the question completely. I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna, I'm gonna unmute Brenda and let her ask her question. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brenda, if you'd like to ask your question. Yes, thank you. Um and good afternoon. My question is, um, I think in the beginning of your presentation, you stated that um, a lot of these well visits correlate with your ACO metrics, so it would improve. Okay, ACO metrics, yeah. Okay. Uh, so mostly fall screening, we do every uh, uh, annual wellness visit, we do the fall screening, we do the depression screening, we are supposed to do height and weight, um, we are supposed to go over their medication list, um, their uh, also problem list. So the ACO metrics we are looking for is fall screening, depression screening, uh, obesity or a BMI screening and follow-up, hypertension screening because we are doing the blood pressure there, 
Uh, we are also looking for the immunization. So we are going through the ACO metrics of pneumonia vaccine and um, flu, uh, flu vaccination. Uh, what else? I'm just thinking the metrics on top of my head. Uh, uh, so those are the colonoscopies. Yeah, colonoscopy, mammogram, mammograms. Uh, we are doing the seeing when they're last. Another thing is, uh, although this is not a part of annual wellness visit, but eye exams. Maybe we can uh, try to see if we can get um, a report from the ophthalmologist uh, uh, before they come for annual wellness visit. We are required to do eye exam, but it's a snail's chart is more than enough. We are not supposed to do dilated eye exam, but if somehow we can incorporate to get the report of their eye exam, we might be able to hit that metrics too. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, our next question is from Catherine Cruz. She asks, does a TUG tug test need to be conducted every single time or only if at risk? Uh, which test? Ms. Cruz, um, can you hear me? Okay, I've unmuted your line. Um, her, her question was, does the tug, T-U-G, test need to be conducted every single time or only if at risk? No, it need to be done every single time. Most of the time, if it's 65-year-old gentleman, healthy, we can say that it's normal, but it's one of the required field where we have to do it. So uh, time up and go test, you can do it at the time when patient is getting up from their um, examination, like a chair uh, from the waiting area and coming to the, uh, to the examination room. It's that much time is more than enough to just see how he's getting up and how he's walking. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cruz, if you have any other questions, you, I see that you are self-muted, so I cannot unmute you. If you have anything else you'd like to ask, if you unmute your phone, you'll be able to ask another question. Okay, we will go to the next question. Um, Ms. Lola, I'm going to unmute you. Her question is, what's the difference between the Medicare wellness visit and the regular physical exam that they used to have before they had their Medicare benefit? Um, regular physical exam, again, does not require all this um, uh, paperwork. Uh, so the physical exams are like a little bit different. We don't have to do uh, time up and go test which just came out recently or depression screening unless and until the providers are used to doing it and that's okay on um, regular physical exams requires you to do a whole examination of the body Medicare wellness visit does not require you to do an entire examination of body uh, there is another thing like mini mental status examination or we are doing the mini cock test is not a requirement as a part of regular physical, but it's a requirement from Medicare uh, point of view. So there are a couple of differences uh, there. I don't know, Dr. Okay. Parisi can help me more if there is another difference he noticed. Well, the key difference is there's no physical exam required by the no. provider. The wellness visit is mostly for historical purposes for preventive care. And that, that does again. That doesn't preclude you from doing physical, but as Dr. Gupta said before, that would have to be pretty much a separate note and a separate coding for that visit. Thank you very much, okay. Dr. I have another question from Heather. Heather, I'm going to unmute your line. Her question is: Is advanced care planning documentation required during the annual wellness visit? Advanced care, uh, yeah, it, um, it's, she's talking about um, uh, DNR and DNI orders. Is this the one she's uh, asking for? Can you confirm? Heather, I've unmuted your phone, your line, if you'd like to ask your question. Okay. She, Heather, can you hear me? Okay, we will go uh, to the next question. Uh-huh. All right. Let's see. Is there any more questions? I think we've been through uh, the ones. I'd just we've like had. to add something. This is Dr. Parisi again. Uh, it okay. really should be encouraged that when uh, patients come in for these annual wellness visits, it would be very helpful and probably important to have another family member come along with them. 
I mean, some of these things require more than one person's verification and understand if it's, you know, the patient is giving us the truthful statement that they need. Uh, plus, patients tend to forget things if there's no one there to help them remind them or jog their memory. So I think it's crucial that, if possible, another family member come along for this business. You should probably encourage your patients to do that. Thank you, Dr. Paresi. Okay, I'm going to unmute um, Cindy. She has Cindy, did you have another I, question? Yeah. Well, yeah, I just wanted to say that the question on advanced care planning, yeah, I'm sure that what um, she's referring to is that the DNR or the um, um, living will, if you will, that kind of, of a note. Um, uh, it used to be a part of Welcome to Medicare in past that we are supposed to discuss, but there is a lot of political issue came after this is started. So now it's a discretion of physician and their policies, but it's not required by Medicare to discuss DNR and DN, uh, DNR and DNI orders or advanced care orders. But if a physician thinks that a patient is comfortable and they can discuss, you can always discuss and uh, document that, but it's not one of the the required field anymore. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, Dr. Gupta. I have a question from Francis Seymour. You have your hand raised. I'll. Francis, can you hear me? I can. You had a question. Yeah, um, you're talking about doing vision exams. Most of my Medicare patients have an eye doctor and they're encouraged to get annual eye exams. So why would we repeat an eye exam during a wellness visit when it's being done and they're often seeing retinal specialists and things like that? This seems redundant. If we have a copy of that eye exams, we do not need to do it. So if you can get that copy and put it in the system, like uh, we are going over colonoscopy, mammogram, which we don't do it, but we just have to have a copy in our um, uh, uh, chart that the patient had eye exam and this is the copy. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attending today. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gupta. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, uh, Gina Greer has a question. Um, I'm going to unmute you. How uh -huh. did you determine the screenings to use in the health risk assessment? Gina, uh, those are me? the standard. Yeah, those are the standard questions from Medicare. So those questions are not done by us. It's on the CMS website. Gina, does that answer your question? Okay, we will go to the next one. Um, oh, she did, she responded back. Yes, it answers her question. Um, we have another question from Brenda. Let me go back up and unmute her. Brenda, I'm going to unmute you. Her question is, these visits are only for primary care physician. Is this correct? So specialists cannot do these well visits. They can do it. Uh, Medicare doesn't restrict this to be done by primary. We encourage to be done by primary, but anybody can do it. Okay, my question would be then, if anybody can do it, I, I would assume that a well visit can only be done one time a year for yeah. each patient. Is correct? Yeah. It, okay. will get it uh, whoever submits the first payment gets the payment. So sometimes it's done in some states, done in um, uh, uh, they're like um, uh, health fairs, or they are getting it done in the churches. So if they submit the first will, they get paid. Okay. Okay. Sure. Good point. Okay. We have uh, another question from Francis Seymour. I have uh, unmuted you, Francis. Do you have a question? Well, I think they kind of answered my question. I, have, I get documentation of lifeline screenings, and lifeline screenings now sometimes come with a um, six or seven page document um, that they are calling a wellness visit. 
So in that case, we don't do those for those patients. They're getting them off-site. Yeah, they're getting it off-site. It's uh, getting it done uh, for mostly um, those um, uh, the Medicare Advantage plans. And uh, sometimes they have some uh, companies are going to their houses and getting it uh, done. So it's um, it's just um, what they have kind of maybe contracted or something like that. Uh, so if we have a plan that we are doing the Medicare wellness visit, we have to educate our patients that it's offered by their primary care or in our offices. So if they have this type of people coming, maybe they can call us and find out where should they get it done. And we encourage them to get it done from their own primary rather than getting it to from the third party. Okay. The, the, other, the other perspective is also is that some of these companies are actually charging these patients directly. You're not submitting it through, through their insurance. And so that's Why something to consider. That? Okay. And answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I have a question from Kathleen Cruz. Her question is Are these limitations with referring and ordering by an RN versus a physician? Kathy, I've unmuted, or Catherine, I've unmuted your line so you can ask anymore. Uh, the rest, uh, ordering, uh, mostly ordering has to be done by physicians or uh, mid-level providers. But again, I will leave this on your practice label. Um, if your RNs are used to ordering and they order, I'm fine with that. In Bay Health, we use the system EPIC, and where our uh, staff does not have uh, 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 like uh, things to order, they cannot have a uh, ordering. Like they cannot be ordering person, so the provider has to order. But if you, in your facility you're allowed to order, then you can order mammograms and colonoscopy. But it's depending upon the individual practice. Okay, Catherine, if you have any more questions, you're self muted. Uh, if you don't mute your phone, you can ask anything else. Okay. We'll go to the next one. Does anybody else have any more questions? Okay, I'll give it another minute or so. Okay. Um, doctors, which metrics correlate with the well visits? I think we've answered this once. Dr. Prezi, which me yes, metrics correlate? Which metrics correlate with well visits? Well, I, I can't give you the CMS numbers, but most of the preventive things: colonoscopies, mammograms, uh, fall screening, depression screening, uh, the many, mel many mental status examinations, uh, the BMI, the height. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head what the exact code number is for Medicare, but those are the ones I recall. Dr. Gupta, any others? In, yeah, immunization, influenza, and flu. Uh, if I flu and pneumonia, I'm, what am I saying? Influenza and pneumonia vaccine. Okay, we are going to take one more question, and this question is from Andrew. Um, his, and I've unmuted your line, Andrew. Um, this how does one check to see if a patient has had one of these wellness visits and another provider during the year? Sometimes patients are unaware exactly what type of encounters they have. Uh, this is very well, difficult to find. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, right, Dr. Parisi. Right. I think there's only two options. One, you have to ask the patient if they've ever had one in that calendar year, and if they have, hopefully they'll remember. Number two, if you submit it and you don't get paid, someone else did it first. Short of that, unless you're all on the same EMR system, you really don't have any way of knowing that. So that could be problematic. You're correct. Okay. Um, I believe that's all the time we have for questions. 
this will conclude our pre-recorded portion of today's presentation. We are fortunate. Uh, I'm so sorry. This concludes our question and answer session. Any additional questions, please type into our chat box, and they will be addressed accordingly. I would like to thank everyone for their attendance and interaction with today's presentation. A recording of this webinar will be emailed to all registrants and can also be found on our HC community site and our YouTube channel at Health Visions Delmarva PTN. Have a great afternoon and thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.